Welcome to Munger Vision. You can see the slight breeze blowing on a nice, warm, sunny afternoon at Mill River Union High School, North Clarendon, Vermont. Peg TV Channel 15 Sports, Munger Vision bringing you a man to lead and the Minutemen in the red uniforms in the field first defensively. Take it on Windsor. And Caitlin Curtis, leadoff batter here for the Yellow Jackets. And well, I hope it will be a good competitive ball game. That'll be ball one. We're going to be looking at Curtis. Cowdery and Heath do up here in the top of the first scheduled for seven. Windsor with those bright yellow uniforms on. A very uh, big trademark of theirs. Kamoa second will flip to Phelps at first and they'll have the out recorded. They'll retire the leadoff batter. So Minutemen looking to regain that winning feeling they had at the start of the season when they won their first three games in a row. Dropped a couple now. And really what their struggle has been it's just been fundamentally sound stuff. Walks, errors, things that they weren't doing in the first three games, which were basically beating themselves. They started to make a bad habit of that last couple of games and looking to get back on track here. As Alicia Cowdery will. Watch that one. Hammer the corner for a strike. Can you go to pegtv.com, click video on demand, watch Munger Vision Sports anytime, anywhere. Free service, it's on the internet, so it means anywhere in the universe you can watch it. You can also catch it on Channel 15, the old-fashioned way, the television set, various nights throughout the week, plus Saturday starting at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Games of the week play through the Sunday morning at 8 a.m. You can find the schedule for Peg TV right in the TV listings of the Rutland Herald. You can find it on the bulletin board on Channel 15. You can find it on the home page of the web page. Oh, yeah, and she took strike three looking, so Amanda Lee looking sharp here in this first two batters she's faced. She's induced a ground out. And a strikeout. Now Amber Heath up, and she will be playing a shortstop position for Windsor. So Amanda Lee looking for a 1-2-3, top of the first. That will be high. Well, see if I can get this defense set for you. As mentioned, Sierra Phelps is at first base. Casey Camos at second. Michaela Maneri is at short. The third baseman is Melissa Mangan. Outfield consists of Haley Katrupi, Casey Dambrakis, and Taryn Redenis, the battery. The catcher, Sarah Brown, and Amanda Lee in a circle. And by far, the best weather day I've had to do a softball game is it's been a wet, cold spring, as usual in Vermont. It wasn't too bad out in Pulteney last night for the Green Mountain College game as they got their first conference win against Linden. And again, uh, you can watch that on pegtv.com or on Channel 15. College softball action on Munger Vision. Today we got high school action. The unrecognized, true, unpaid leader in local sports coverage. Come a long way with no sponsorship or backing. <laughs> so Lee takes a little walk behind the rubber, gets back on it, and Gets the sign, it's an outside pitch, and it'll be ball four, and that'll become the first walk of the softball game. And I'll bring up the cleanup batter, Mariah DeLong. So DeLong up as Windsor. That's really not a long ride. I can do Windsor from Rutland in just about an hour. There's a strike, and a runner fake going, fake me out also. Oh, Windsor's a beautiful town to go visit. You know, in July, mid-July, they have that uh, the New England Barbecue Championships there. And you you talk about barbecue. If you're into all that, she's going this time to throw it behind and wide. And Maneri will scoop it up. And now there's a stolen base for Windsor, the first of the game. And that will put their runner Heath in scoring position. So DeLong will have to wait as Mr. Bedard wants to do a little housework and dust off that plate. But yeah, if, you, if you're just hanging around in mid-July and you get that weekend, I think it's the weekend of the 24th, 25th, they have New England Barbecue Championships in Windsor, Vermont. And I went last year. It was a blast. It was just like on Food Network. You talk about the food scents in the air, the odors, the taste, the everything. Oh, my God. It was just like TV food. It was awesome. It was fun. It took me about an hour to drive there. And that will go five-hole on Brown, and that will allow... Heath to get down to third base, and this is what Mill River did the last couple games. Things like that. You got to easier said than done, but you know you got to you got to stop the pass balls. You got to stop throwing wild pitches. You got to stop the walks. You got to field the ground balls. Our routine plays. Things that they were doing so well in the first three games. 
and that definitely caught the plate, but it definitely was low, and they're being very careful with the long. Roshan on deck for Windsor. They have two down, but a runner at third, so they're trying to get the game's first run here. And that was a ball, but there was some hooting and hollering after the play, and I didn't know. Nope. Didn't know if it was going to be an illegal pitch or not, but a lot of it with Lee is just her mechanics. It's her balance, actually. When you watch that pitch, if you go back and watch that, when she released the ball, she was already heading toward first base with her body. She's got to step and follow through and stride toward the catcher. Right now, she's just off balance when she's on her follow through. Right there, you can see it easily. So that will become a walk. Well, I'll tell you what, they've got the numbers reversed. Oh, there we go, okay. So the base is loaded now for Windsor. And that's a great pitch by Lee. And it's Holly Heath up, and she's the catcher. And she's got a chance to give Windsor at least a one-run lead, if not more, with a base hit here. She won't offer it that pitch high and outside. Again, base is juiced. Lee got the first two outs, got a ground out the second, then a strikeout. And she's had a little problem since then. A oh, great pitch there. Same spot as she got the called strike. This time she gets the swinging strike. And Heath, I don't want to leave the bases full right here with two down. No river. That's going to be a number off the end of the bat. It's going to be picked up by Phelps, and she will just tag her for the out, and they'll leave them loaded. Don't score a run. We'll go to the bottom of the first scoreless from Mill River Union High School on Munger Vision. Caitlin Curtis in the circle for Windsor, wearing number nine. She'll be the pitcher to start the ball game. She'll be facing Amanda Lee, leadoff batter for Mill River. That's what Lee did so well from that leadoff spot the first couple games, and now she was able to hump through there and get on base. And actually, I think the first baseman lost contact with the uh, bag. No, they're going to call her out. So on a very close play at first, Lee called out. Now Casey Dambrack is up. She's in center field today. Like I said, we've seen her at shortstop, at first base, and center field. Very versatile player. Plays all the positions very well, and obviously batting up in the number two spot. Does a good job of getting the bat on the ball. Got the kind of speed where you can get her on base with a bunt or even a slow grounder. That's going to be followed out of play. Maneri on deck as Mill River able to escape that first inning. Not allow any runs to come in. Windsor had the bases loaded. And that one I missed because I had my hand off the camera. They will roll through the outfielders. Dan Brackett is going to have at least a double, and that's where she'll pull up with a double. Unofficial. My book's always unofficial. I would call that a single in an air, but I got in a gap, so I think we'll go with a double. Now Maneri up in Mill River threatening here in the bottom half of the first as they've got number two batter, Dan Brackett. On base, and she will take off, and boy, I tell you, nobody even covered the bag. It was a swinging strike, and Dan Brackett's made easy work of making the steal. Ball put into play. Shortstop. Got her. Run will score, and it'll be one nothing Mill River, so Maneri. That's all you want to really do. I mean, you'd love to crank one out of the ballpark. Basically, you just want to get a bat on the ball. And make the defense make a play. Now Mangan up with two outs, nobody on, and we're going after that first pitch. He'll follow it back over the backstop out of play. Got the loyalty day parade coming up downtown Rutland, May 2nd, starting at 2 p.m. You can go down early, get a great seat. Always a lot of good things to watch that loyalty day parade. Oh, high heat right there. I just got to buy Mangan strike two. Curtis just reared back and let it go. Casey come on, on deck. On. That'll be called foul. It always takes me an inning or two to kind of get in the rhythm of the camera work of a softball game, especially from center field. You're swinging the ball at the camera a lot more radius left and right than if you behind home base. So you bear with me. You can't get any worse. That's the inning. She'll strike her out, but Mill River will pick up one run. We'll go to the second. one nothing Mill River over Windsor on Munger Vision. 
Well, before we start the second inning, there's a discussion with the Windsor coach who's got the white shirt on out there. He came out and talked to Mr. Bedard, who got the other umpire, and they're all standing at the circle. At the rubber, Amanda Lee had her line up with the circle. Well, they're, they're, I don't know what they're discussing, but it uh, prolonged the game here in between the innings. And I really can't imagine unless the rubber's not lined up with home base, but I don't know why I would take an inning and only one pitcher complain about that. But they're ready to play ball. one nothing Mill River is we're going to be looking at Haley Dunn, Michaela Esty, and then Tori Hill do up for Windsor. They had the bases loaded after there were two outs in that first inning. Windsor did and were unable to get the timely hit. Weren't able to get the uh, any of the runs home. Lee into the windup. That was drilled. Foul down in the dugout of Windsor. Yeah. And they are talking about Amanda Lee's stride. That's where she got in trouble when she gets off balance and falls toward first. And she tends to be out of the strike zone with the ball. The defense staying the same with Mangan at third, Maneri at short, Camo at second, and Phelps at first. Brown behind the plate doing the catching. Radenis, Dambrakis, and Katrupi the outfield. And of course, Lee in the circle. A lot more softball action coming up for you, not only from Mill River, but from Otter Valley. I believe from Proctor. That's a foul ball for a strike. And also over at West Rollins, so plenty of spring sports still coming up on Munger Vision for you. Plus I have the Bougiani Thunderbird AAU basketball tournament coming up in a couple weeks with a bunch of games being taped there. On the infield, Camo fights the wind, will make the grab out number one as Lee did a nice job there just battling with those pitches and she'll get done out as she's retired the leadoff batter in both innings she's worked here. Now Michaela Esty up her first at bat. We'll see what. Haven't seen a lot of squaring to bunt by either side. To Lee, a little dribbler. She'll come back, make the throw, and get the out. So two down. Now just like the first inning, she retired the first two batters. And that's when the trouble started. We'll see if she has a little easier ride here. And she looks at the number nine batter, the center fielder, Tori Hill. And that pitch elevated, but out on the strike zone for a ball. Yeah, congratulations to Jen Heath, Green Mountain College. I went over and did their game against Linden, the second part of a doubleheader, and they got their first conference win. And a dominant performance, actually. They played extremely well. Young team, got to keep your ears and eyes open next year for Green Mountain College. They're going to make a bang out there in that NAC conference. No, not going to be a low strike zone today. Sometimes you'll get that call, sometimes you won't. Depends on the umpire strike zone. Lee right now just trying to feel her way along and establish the rhythm in the strike zone. And that'll be a two-out walk, just like the last inning. So, Top of the order up, Caitlin Curtis. She grounded out to come out at second back in the first inning. She's officially 0 for 1 today. Runner goes, pitch called the strike, and now she is in there ahead of the throw. So, runner down at second, representing the tying run with two down for Windsor. As they've gotten a couple stolen bases here in the ball game. Again, right here, it's easier said than done. But as the pitcher, you control the third out. Don't even worry about the runner. That's going to come right at you. That's a base hit, and they're going to bring the ball. Home on the throw, and she'll be safe. They'll come back to second, and she got her. She's out. High tag, and yeah, she got her high, and nice job by Kamal. Great throw from Brown. The run will count. will be tied at one, and Curtis is able to pop up off the turf and seems to be all right, and wow, great camera work. I got to tell you, that was pretty darn good. As you can see, Caitlin Curtis okay back in the circle. She was... She drove in the run to tie the game at one, and she tried to go to second on the throw home, and they got her out, and she took the tag up around the chin area. I think if she was slid conventionally and in a more horizontal position, she would have been safe under the tag. There's a bun attempt, pow ball. And that is Kamal. And again, it's, it's a tough thing to teach at the high school level if they haven't experimented with the technique of bunting, but these Mill River players just get so, so low to bunt that 
it, it does make you want to come down on top of the ball and deaden it in the in the skinned infield on the turf area. But they're down so low, the ball can only pop up. They pop up an awful lot of bunt attempts. Pitch coming, and that's going to be fouled back for a strike. Mill River picking up a run in the first. Windsor picking up their run here in the top of the second. And I expect this to be, hopefully, like I said, a competitive game, but I can see it being a very equal game. That young lady standing in front of the camera is Tori Hill. She's the center fielder. That's the third. Long throw. Got her. Nice job on that 5-3 ground out by Windsor as it goes from Cowdery to Kinney, and it'll get the out. Now Redenis up for the first time today. And again, she's got a lot of pop in that bat. Oh, and she went up top. Couldn't catch that rise ball, and that'll be a swinging strike one. Now getting back to that play that ended the top of the second, that's going to be foul. Where they th they scored the run, Winter did, but then they threw Curtis out at second. People say I need longer arms because I need to pat my I pat my back so much, my own back. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, I got a 1980 camcorder standing out in center field, keeping the book, doing the roster, and following the action with the camera. I thought that was outstanding camera work. Oh, a little chin music will be a ball. Now, I've, I've gotten some community service awards where I've been recognized for my community service, but I've never, 15 years, been nominated for any sports-oriented coverage or awards. Strike three on the changeup. For Dennis, thought it was high. I thought it was high, but I told you already it's not going to be a, a low strike zone, and I think that epitomizes right there what I was talking about is Cornell up with two down and nobody on. And, again, it doesn't mean it wasn't a strike. Every umpire has their own strike zone. That's call a strike right there. But no, I I personally, I do believe I've done enough games and different genders of sports, and age groups and coverage and championships and tight games that somewhere along the line, it was obvious that she got a sports oriented award. That'll be a base hit as the outfielder Hill will sit on top of the ball. That's one way to keep it from rolling through. So again, with two down, each team's doing a lot of their uh, offensive damage with two down as Cornell, who's been hot this year, will be at first base now. Katrupi up. And Katrupi, a very strong hitter. Runner goes, throw coming down, and she'll be there safe. Of course, Cornell's got that blistering speed. So Katrupi with a chance to break the tie. And that'll be too far outside. I don't think it was a height issue there more than the outside location for a ball. Windsor got that infield drawn, or that outfield drawn way in. Oh, well, great look. That's a great located pitch. That low outside knee high ball like that with some juice on it. She had a little garlic sauce on that pitch. Curtis, a youngster out there. Went change up. Goes to second base through the hole, and they're going to send Cornell home. Yep, she's coming. And she will beat the throw, and then going to second base will be Katrupi, and she's going to take third base, and she will be safe as she slid under the tag. And now they'll have to, happens every time the base will pop out at third base, and they have to reattach it. So the tie is broke on Katrupi's RBI single. And now Sarah Brown up, batting in that number nine spot, the Mill River catcher. So like I said, Windsor getting their run after they had two outs. Mill River getting their second run here after there were two outs. Brown in the first couple games this year hit the ball extremely well. Looking to bring in that corner, runner at third, and that's going to be playable. Actually, I can't even find the ball. Well, so much for my award. It was caught on the infield for the last out by the second baseman, Michaela Esty, and we have a 2-1 Mill River lead going into the third inning. For Windsor, they're at the number two spot, Cowdery, Heath, and then DeLong, as they're in the power portion of their order. Lee, pitch on the way. That's going to be taken by Mangan, the first guy there. 
So they again, for the third inning in a row, Lee will retire the leadoff batter. That's a, I, I think that's a very underlooked stat in women's softball in high school. We know how it applies, especially in baseball, especially in pro ball, but it just trickled down effect. It's the same here. So that will bring up Amber Heath, who walked her first time up. As Windsor getting their second look through the lineup now at Amanda Lee pitching. I find it interesting too, between innings when Lee goes out to take her warm up pitches, Coach Valenti over there talking to her specifically about her stride coming straight on, come straight up, you know, pull the ball through, snap the hips up. Basically keeping your balance, not falling off toward first base. Great pitch right there, first strike. Get in outfield. I'm scanning it. I don't see any changes for Dennis Dambrakis and Katrupi. The outfield browns the catcher. And she frames that pitch beautifully, first strike. Kamal remains at second, Phelps is at first, Maneri the shortstop, and Mangan is at third. A two to one score in the third. No river would lead, and that's gonna be foul. And we've seen some good games already this year at West Rutland on Munger Vision, at Mill River on Munger Vision. We've seen Otter Valley here at Mill River, and they look darn good. And went to Green Mountain College last night. That's going to be out of play. Not a lot of baseball action. I've done one MSJ game against Mill River in baseball action. And like I said, the Thunderbirds AAU tournament coming up. Tell you what, she went after that pitch, and that'll be a foul ball. That was a strange pitch. It was a floater high and outside, but she went and chased it. And they went for a foul ball strike. She'll step back in now as they are an attempt at a changeup. And you got to work those pitches in. I agree. She just held on to the ball too long. That's a tough pitch to get down, really. You know, she went right back to it. She back to back change up. I won't stake my life on it, but. And look at the outside corner and came up high. That'll be a walk. So Windsor, who has shown that they will run those bases when they get people on them. Got the speedy Heath down there at first base. Now DeLong up. She walked. Her first time up, her only time up so far. She uh, steps in from the right side, and that's going to be a high fastball, a rise ball, out of the strike zone. As the weather continues to improve, get out there, enjoy Vermont. I'm looking for it. Mangan says she's got it. She'll go back on the outfield grass and make the out. The runner cannot advance, and Lee now with two down in the third. I believe we'll go seven. I hope so. Now Roshan up. Well, I have to wait and see if it is Roshan. Runners going, throw coming down, and boy, they all got there together and just did beat the throw. Tell you what, that was a beautiful throw from Brown because she put it right where the tag was going to be made, which saves you a couple tenths of a second. You know, catch the ball high and then bring it down for the tag, but. She was just barely there ahead of the throw. And an outside corner called a strike. So Heath at second with a couple outs. Windsor though looking for that tying run with two down. Oh, great pitch. Drops it in there. For the swinging strike. So Lee bearing down here. That's going to be beat into the turf. Mangan had to play it back, and no, it's going to be safe. Runners will be at the corners. As you can see, Phelps run the ball back into the circle, backed up by Maneri, and Windsor with runners at the corners. Oh, you know how I feel about this. You've got you to gotta send that runner from first to second on the steal attempt. See if you can draw the throw down from the catcher, and if they do throw down, release the runner from third to go home. Got to stir it up. Got to stir it up. I got a feeling Windsor's going to do that. As Heath coming up now. A couple of Heaths out there. This is Holly Heath. Amber Heath is at third. So two down, and again, Windsor able to make the noise after their two outs. 
Lee coming back with a strong pitch right there. Amanda Lee again. Tough competitor. Good athlete, tough competitor. And boy, sometimes she's her best under pressure like that right there. Her last two pitches were outstanding. So Holly Heath looking at a two-strike count with runners at first and third. That one will dive in and obviously be a ball. The Yellow Jackets over the years have had some very good softball teams. And did she hold up? No, nope. she went around on that high pitch, and that's going to end the inning. Windsor will strand two, and we'll have a two-to-one Mill River lead going into the bottom of the third. The order, Amanda Lee up for Mill River. As they bat in the bottom of the third. And that's a ball from Caitlin Curtis. Curtis staying out there in the circle. Got Holly Heath, the catcher. Andre Kinney's at first. Michaela Estes at second. Amber Heath is at short. And Cowdery. Oh, what an interesting catch as she'll make the grab like a receiver trying to stay in bounds in softball. So again, Lee so successful with that leadoff bunt will swing away and be called out on the pop-out. Now Dan Brack is up. She had a double and scored a run back in the first. Mill River getting a, a solid team. When they get in trouble, it's when they just, I don't know how to, they just make mistakes. They just almost like they're not bearing down or focusing on every play. And right there, tickling the inside corners, Curtis with a strike. That catch, by the way, was made by Michaela Esty at second base by Windsor for the out. If I try to locate the ball, I'm waiting for a call for the umpire. Foul. So that fell between, oh, I think it was just about three Windsor players there. Well, get out and enjoy for mine. I tell you that, there's all kinds of hiking trails and picnic spots and oh, lakes and ponds to go kayaking in and just, you know, you don't need a Six Flags amusement park. That's a great pitch. As he'll throw it down on the strikeout. But the Ambracus with a big swing will go down for the third strikeout of the ball game for Curtis. Now Maneri up. She grounded out on the infield to the shortstop, but it drove in a run, so she's got an RBI. That's going to be the second. Nice stop to throw to first. Got her just by a stride, and we'll go to the fourth. Two to one, the Minutemen. Lee with a couple strikeouts in the ball game. She's going to be looking at Haley Dunn, Michaela Esty, and Tori Hill. Here in the fourth game, moving right along. Hill, batting number three this inning, represents the bottom of the order. Great pitch. Strike one called on a sunny day from beautiful Mill River. Great place to come down and catch either a softball or baseball game at. Bring a lawn chair or a blanket, and get some rays and support your local student athletes. That will be beat foul. Well, I haven't said it last year. I didn't forget. I just didn't want to over hammer it, but you know, Wish Mill River coach Mike Lee a very speedy and complete recovery as he had a strep infection in his leg. It's a, it's a real funky thing when you hear what happened to the poor guy, but he ended up in Springfield, Mass, getting a lot of work done on his leg. And uh, again, I always say it to you, and I mean, there's Phelps with a good play, and she'll step on the bag for the out. You can contact the school and, and see where you would send Mike a card or an email and, you know, tell him you're thinking about him. And, Team's playing hard for him. Hope to see him back in the community here very shortly. Now Michaela Esty up with one down and nobody on base. I'm not sure what that was, but it floated away. As Esty grounded out to the pitcher Lee back in the second inning. That's been her only time up. Game going along just about the way I figured it would be. I'm not sure what that was all about. But it'll be ball two. So Lee going to take a little walk and kind of get herself back down to earth here. Oh, years and years ago, I tried to, I did a show on Sports Beat where I walked through uh, pitching with a freshman named Danielle Hendy. 
when I'd be a great start run. And she was trying to get me to throw the ball the way they do it out there. The fast pitch, there's out number two is Kamal will throw to Phelps for that 4-3 ground out. And I'll tell you what, that's no easy task, throwing that ball accurate and with velocity on it. So two down again, but this is where Windsor's been their most dangerous. Hill up, she walked and scored Windsor's run back in the second. We're at two to one in the top of the fourth, the river with the lead. Looking to put it into a couple game losing streak here and get back on the, uh, especially in this league game. This is a matchup with Windsor's league game. And a strike at the knees right down the middle of the plate. As Mangan over at third base, about four strides in from the bag. All great pitch. Lee with two strikeouts so far in the ball game. He's got it set up to end the inning on a K right here. Been throwing a lot of change-ups for her today. We'll see what she picks out here. Went fastball, trying to spot it up outside corner and brought it too far outside. Hill with good discipline that time. Didn't go chasing the ball out of the strike zone. Lee likes to work quick between pitches. That'll be scooped up by Brown. Gets it back into the circle. And Lee doing a lot of chatting with herself out there today. Oh, I don't know how she feels. I do that all the time myself. Got her looking for their third strike out of the game and the third out of the inning. And Will River will maintain that 2-1 to one lead going into the bottom of the fourth. Caitlin Curtis with a strikeout in each of the first three innings has not pitched bad at all. Looking at the middle of the order with Mangan, Camo, and Redenis do up. For the bottom of the fourth on Munger Vision, strike one called. Again, it's sunny, it's warm, just a little bit of a breeze. There's always breeze at a game because you can just talk about wide open, clear cut fields where there's no resistance for the wind through the trees. But overall, a great day to cover a softball game. The Minutemen and Windsor in a conference matchup. That's going to be down to Esty. She'll back up, make the grab throw to first, get the out. Esty's been sharp over at second today. She's had a couple chances on assist and on putouts and gets the job done. So Mangan will go 0 for 2 so far. And now they'll bring up Camo, who grounded out the third, her only time up. One up after that rise ball, couldn't catch up to it, and that's a swinging strike. For the most part, Curtis has worked ahead in the count a high majority of the day. Again, one up, that time a little bit more inside, but a rise ball again, and we'll follow it off and be down in the count, all in two. Oh, those rise balls, they, they are, oh, those hitters like to go up the ladder and chase those. And she swung on it, missed, Strike three drop. They'll throw down to first, and she will be safe. Then the ball will be backed up by the right fielder. So Kamal will strike out, but be safe on the air. So the fourth strikeout is not a kind one. As Redden is coming up, she struck out back in the second. And again, that's Tori Hill, number eight, with her back to the camera. Center fielder, runner goes, throw coming down, and she will be safe as the ball goes off from the bag as Esty was there to make the catch. So the runner moving up to second base now. So Camo ends up at second on the steal with one down, putting herself in scoring for this position for Redenis. Redenis going up after that. Rise ball can't catch up to it. That's going to be strike two on Redenis. Again, Redenis, I watched her in warm ups and on practice. When she catches the ball with the bat, she generates a lot of power. Just no consistency right now in finding that ball with the bat. And the coach having a little chat with Redenis. Well, you know how they talk a lot of times about uppercut, uppercut swingers? She's not, she's just the opposite. She's got way too long a swing. Some of the best hitting techniques is that's the fifth strikeout of the game and then the second out. And I'll bring up Cornell. Was Brattleboro back in 2000. Now, I, don't, I can't remember the young lady's name who was the coach back then. She could still be the coach today for all I know, but her team's really impressed me. She had their hands all the way back 
with the knob of the bat facing the pitcher already in a horizontal position, so all they do is just come forward with the bat. A real short, powerful, compact swing. Her team hit the ball real well. Her team was in contention for a title that year. Ended up, Rutland beat them for the, the semifinals to go to the finals that year and beat BFA for the championship, but right down, you got a lot of a long, loopy swings nowadays in softball, but I liked that technique. Hands all the way back. Now with the bat facing the pitcher, just come straight level, level swing, come straight through with it. Real quick, snap it through quick hands. That's going to drop, and it'd be a base hit roll past the outfielder. That will score. Come on, run number three in, and there is Cornell coming through with yet another clutch hit this season. Oh, she's had a lot of them in the early portions of the season here. She's got two singles today and an RBI, and she scored a run. Nothing wrong with that. Now Katrupi up. She's got an RBI single, Katrupi does, as Mill River able to get a run in with two down makes it three to one now, Minutemen. Katrupi and then Brown on deck. And it's Curtis. Now, let's see. Okay, no problem. The umpire's not there. He's not ready. So no problem with her coming off the rubber like that. She was ready to go. Mr. Bedard had to get all set. So Caitlin Curtis We'll have the ball hit back to her. She'll flip the first. That's the inning, but Mill River going into the fifth now has a 3-1 to one lead over Windsor on Munger Vision. Okay, we'll watch Amanda Lee take her warm-ups. I just wanted to tell you about a benefit breakfast for Mike Lee Saturday, May 8th from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. at South Station Restaurant. Of course, that's on Route 7 and South in Rutland. You can get the tickets for this at $10 a person at Mill River Union High School by contacting Mary Bride. The number there is 775-3451. The Mill River Softball and Baseball Players, Mill River Booster Club, Donna Gravel, Mark Robb, and Kathy Beelan, also people you can contact. This proceeds will go toward helping the Lee family for medical expenses for Mike's recovery from beta. Oh, I can't begin to announce, pronounce all those names, but for the illness that he suffered that has sidelined him for a long, long time. But I'll give you all the information again real quickly here as Lee going to have that ball down to Phelps. She'll flip to Camo and she, she's going to be safe as she was pulled off the bag on the throw. So that is the first time this ball game that the leadoff batter and that's Curtis has got on base. And so Windsor now, like I said, through the first four innings Lee was able to get the leadoff batter out. Windsor with a chance to Move that runner along, trying to small ball it, and that'll be foul. So Curtis will go back to first base. And again, I'll give you all the information again on the Mike Lee benefit for his breakfast benefit at a later time in the ball game. But again, that's coming up May 8th, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. at the South Station. And all the proceeds are going to help the Lee family for the medical expenses. And I'll give you more contact information probably between innings, as that's going to be a wild pitch. And Curtis will take second base. So three to one in the fifth, and Windsor with a chance here. Once you get that leadoff batter on, that gives you a lot of different strategy to work with as Cowdery at the plate. And Amanda Lee's pitch. Ooh, ooh, ooh. She gave it a long, hard look, and then she faked the throw to second, but that was, had to be just hairs away from being a strike on that corner. So Cowdery will take st strike right there, and she'll take a look down the third base coach. Amber Heath on deck. Windsor getting their only run back in the second, lead with three strikeouts in the ball game. And a big swing and a miss there. That pops in the glove as Cowdery can't catch up to that fastball. Oh, Lee's got good velocity. She's a she's a tall, lengthy, skinny kid, but she that, you know she can when she pulls up on that follow through, she can snap the ball in there. And that's going to be scooped up by Brown. That's a nice job. It's ball four now. Put runners at first and second now for Windsor. Amber Heath and then Mariah DeLong on deck as they're at the three four spot in the order. So Amanda Lee trying to 
I get this a little bit. Uh, it's a pickle right now. She's trying not to make it a whole jar of pickles. It's she has a tendency to think too much. And I, and I mean that kindly. She's overanalyzing everything she's doing right now. But her natural ability, just catch and fire. Catch and fire. Don't even mess around with, with change-ups right now or anything like that. you got to be in the strike zone. Find a pitch you can get there consistently. And this will warrant a visit to the mound or to the circle by head coach Darren Bag Badgley. And again, I'll just, this is a good time to me. Saturday, May 8th, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. at the South Station restaurant on Route 7 South in Rutland. There's a benefit breakfast being held for Mike Lee. And I, again, I can't even begin to pronounce the illness. Beta hemolytic streptococcus and necrotizing fresidius. Now, any doctor listening to that probably just cringed. But you can contact Mill River, 775-3451. And again, that's, that's going to help out the Leaf family, so I urge you to be there and help out. Mike's a great guy. He, uh younger than I am, but most people are. But he was an outstanding athlete at MSJ. He's been involved in the community as far as coaching his daughters and young players and, you know, here at Mill River helping out. And tough break. Got a tough break, man, that, that, that streptococcus, or however you pronounce it. It's a freaky disease, real weird thing can happen to anybody. Uh, un, uh, nothing you really do about it, it just happens to you. But he's a real good guy, he's got a good family, and I tell you, get out there and help him out. A breakfast for 10 bucks? I mean, you can't beat that anyways. Oh, great pitch. Big out right there, got the strike out. That's the first out of the inning as Amber Heath goes down on strikes. Now we'll bring up Mariah DeLong. She has walked and grounded out the third. That is Lee's fourth strike out of the ballgame, but it couldn't have came at a better time. And that will be high and outside. Brown doing a good job of keeping the ball in front of her, the catcher out there for Mill River. Lee will fire, and boy, got a little help right there by the batter going up out of, way out of the strike zone and just did get the end of the bat on it. And a completely unrelated subject from the breakfast for Mike Lee on May, oh, I want to say 8th and 9th, but it could be 7th and 8th. The Bugiani Thunderbirds AAU basketball tournament back in full swing this year. And that's a great tournament. Now you get teams from everywhere. New York, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts. I mean, from everywhere. I think even Jersey. You see some great basketball. Oh, and she'll get her look at strike three and again on a nice pitch that came around the inside corner. Back-to-back -back strikeouts at the number three and four spot in the lineup. You couldn't get tougher outs right there. Roshan up now with two down, two on in a three-to-one game. Mill River with a lead, trying to hold that lead here in the fifth. So Lee now at five strikeouts in the game. And she has found her rhythm now. It's funny how they find it for no apparent reason, then it'll just go away for no reason. You know, you're talking about young people out there, these high school pitchers. Oh, that's going to be trouble. That's going to be trouble. It's going to drop in. And they're going to send the runner home and the throw up the line and the collision at the plate. The run will score. Move, runners will move up and second and third now. As Curtis again involved in the collision. Remember, she was in the collision on the steal attempt at second. And right now, yeah, the coach for Windsor came down and was ta is talking to the umpire. He was going to try and talk to Sarah Brown, who went up the line to make the grab of the ball. But she was in the baseline of the runner. The run scored, so really, it, it's not going to affect anything here. And Mr. Bedard doing the right thing by just explaining the protocol on the play. So all of a sudden, three to two, and Holly Heath up. She's 0 for two, and she's grounded out the first and struck out. I'll tell you, on a play like that, though, also, I, I've also looked at that as a catcher and as a coach and as a fan. And as a, and then in defending Brown, the catcher, 
she went up the line almost simultaneously as the runner was approached because the ball was there. It was a bang, bang play. She's got to have a right to reach out and grab the ball. Now, I think it was the right call and everything they made, but I think that rule's got to be foul ball as the runners will go back. Because it actually looked to me, and of course I didn't have anywhere near the view, Miss Bedard did, that she was behind the, the base running line to receive the throw. In the event, 3-2 Windsor. It's strike three. Lee will have six strikeouts. Windsor's chipped away, made it a one-run game. We're going to the bottom of the fifth and a doozy on Munger Vision. Two teams very equally matched up here today at Mill River. Windsor in those yellow uniforms, the yellow jackets out there. Sarah Brown, the number nine batter in the order, then the top of the order, Lee and Dambrakis. As we've made it to the bottom of the fifth. And a base hit for Brown, maybe. A 9-3 put out. Yeah, a 9-3 put out. I always forget that. Well, it's because that, that's that happens a lot in softball action. So she gets a good piece of the ball, but will ground out 9-3. So she goes down 0 for 2 today. Now Amanda Lee, who's 0 for 2, she's ground out to the pitcher and popped up to second base. And that's going to be playable and called off by the center fielder to Hill, and she'll make the grab for the second out. To try to find a focus on my camera. It's so bright and sunny out, beautiful out today, that sometimes I can't see my eyepiece. But two down very quickly. And now Dan Brackus, who's one for two. She's had a double. She has scored a run. And she's also struck out. Ball tip caught by the catcher Heath. No, softball mean a completely different animal than baseball. Now, I've, I've seen it for so many years. Oh, that could be a gapper. That's going to roll to the fence, and Dan Brackus is going to have another double and maybe more. No, nope. she will pull up at second base, just about identical to where she hit her last, her first double. And Maneri up now. She's over two. She's grounded out to the shortstop, but that Brian on the run is going to be eye for that. And she's grounded out to second base. Good speed out there at second in Dan Brackus, and uh, she's hit the ball like that all season. She's been one of the very consistent hitters for Mill River. Foul tip, caught for a strike. But no, that, uh, I just don't think these two teams I'm watching today, small ball enough, they're just swinging for the fence. Is this going to be a chance for the third out? Oh, she made the catch! She can't believe it either. What a great catch. Going away from the play, with her back to the play, is Kinney, and that will end the inning and keep it at 3-2 Mill River. Go to the sixth in a one-run game, Mill River with that lead. Lead with six strikeouts, most of those coming in the last three innings. She has struck out five of her six strikeouts since the third inning. She's going to be looking at Dunn, Esty, and Hill. The seven, eight, nine spot in the order. And that could be playable on the infield. Phelps will make the grab, and that's the out. So one pitch, one down, and leadoff batter erased here in the sixth. Phelps has played a very solid game where there's here. Phelps stay at first base. Now Este up. The second base player, second baseman for Windsor. A little bit too high and a little bit too outside. Esty today is 0 for 2. She's grounded out to the pitcher and grounded out to Kamo at second. No, I just, and of course my opinion means absolutely squat. I just like to talk a lot. I think both these teams are good examples of, of baseball philosophy and softball. I mean, they've had a lot of opportunities to small ball get on base, to move runners along, to create havoc on the defense and make them shift around and, and make them make a play and they just haven't uh, even nibbled at uh, small ball. And I, I've seen so many games over the years of different teams that are kind of in a rut or a low like this offensively and they'll just get up one inning and everybody bunts and all kinds of good things happen offensively for those teams. 
Of course, you're very good at executing the bunt also. SD will walk, and that'll put the tie and run at first with one down in the six, scheduled for seven. And now Hillop, she's walked, scored a run, and struck out. And Brown, that strong arm, faked the throw to first. Of course, Esty down at second base with good speed. They attempt the bunt and the coverage by Maneri. So I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, small ball, small ball, but you got to be able to really practice and execute it and practice that you have the ability to bunt, directional bunt and stuff like that too. Good stop by Brown on a roller in the dirt. But as time wins, the pitch before they squared the bunt. They want to move that runner to second. They're only down the one run. Not just for a sacrifice. They're looking to, to also create a oh, swing and a miss. Great pitch. And, yeah, Hill turns and asks. And that is strike three. So that is two down now. Top of the order in Curtis. Now, Curtis has been very good today at the plate-making contact. She's got ground ball to Camo. She's got time. She'll throw and got her. You see the call. They'll go to the bottom of the sixth, leading by one. Three, two over Windsor Mill River on Munger Vision. And Curtis has kept her team in the ball game. We'll come into the bottom of the sixth, throw strike one to Melissa Mangan. Mangan, then Camo, and then Redennis do up here for Mill River. And they'd love to pad that lead, that one run lead right now. A little shaky. Windsor's had the runners on. They just have not been able to execute getting them around the bases, tie this thing up. Mangan struck out in the first and then grounded out to the second baseman, Esty, in the fourth. And right there was a rise ball. It wasn't a change up, but she did take a little pace off the ball. She has hit her spots well. She hasn't hurt herself a lot with the walks today. And she has five strikeouts in the ball game. There's the bun attempt, and I like it. It didn't work, but I like it. I like everything about it. And that'll be off from the catcher's glove as Camo. And then Redennis. Very patient staying there. Oh, big swing and a miss by Camo. She went looking for downtown on that one. No River with a run in the first, a run in the second, and a run in the fourth. That was the changeup that floated on her. She also slowed down her motion. You got you want to really you want the same motion, but you want to hold. I don't know if she's throwing a C gripped changeup or not out there, but her arm speed slowed down tremendously. She came back with some pretty good juice right there, and Camo will go down on strikes for the second out. And Redennis, who's 0 for 2 today, she has struck out twice. Got a piece of it, but it'll be fouled out of play. So Windsor, Caitlin Curtis, looking for a 1-2-3 inning. As Windsor uh, coming up the top of the seventh, they want to be down just that one run. That's the changeup. And again, she fooled Redennis. I could just tell by her arm speed that she threw the changeup. 0-2 to Redennis. With the bases clean here, with two down in the bottom of the six. Back to back change ups and that floating. But I've seen a lot of that this year. That used to be a no no. Now it's becoming in vogue, a trend. It's Curtis. See her winding that arm up as there's time being called as they get Mr. Bedard some more of those fall ball softballs so he can have them in his pouch on his side there. Redennis will go down on strikes for the third time today, and Windsor with three outs to go, down by one run, going in the top of the seventh. Two, three, four batters do up Cowdery, Amber Heath, and Mariah DeLong. Seven strikeouts in the ballgame for number seven, Lee, out there. She's overall a good ballgame. She's a little, little inconsistent for a while, had some walk trouble, but found her rhythm later in the ballgame when you want it. 
And she'll even it up now, one ball, one strike. Yeah, I got some weekend games coming up at Otter Valley, Saturday games, where I can head up there and get the Lady Otters. Weather permitting, of course, that's going to be a ball too low. Brown trying to hold it and frame it like a good catch you should, but it'll be two balls, one strike. And Windsor with a run in the second and a run in the fifth, and that's been it for him. That could be playable. Phelps fading. Nope. It'll go out of play for just a fall ball strike. Mill River, of course, with some more home games coming up on Munger Vision. West Rutland with some more home games. they got a double header coming up next weekend, which weather permitting, I'll be there for both of those. And the pitch. That's going to be to Kamal, and she's been good today. Another 4-3 combination there and he'll get the leadoff batter out. Amber Heath, she's walked a couple times and struck out. So Windsor with just two outs left to work with here in this ball game. And Lee, that's been a consistent strike all day. We'll get the call right there. Mangan, Maneri, Camo. Phelps on the infield. Brown is the catcher. And that will be foul ball caught nicely over there by a spectator. Dan Brackish, Redenish, and Kachupi the outfield. Of course, Lee in the circle. A little bit too high that time for a ball. And hopefully the weather will just continue to get better for each game so you don't have to hear me whine and complain. That will be foul. Nice crowd on hand today for this ball game. And again, you can watch it on Channel 15, or you can go to pegtv.com, click Video On Demand. A whole slew of games to choose from over the years from Unger Vision there. Lee with a two-strike count. Put a little extra on that pitch, and it came up out of the strike zone. So Amber Heath, not wanting to become strikeout victim number eight, Will not. That'll be down. Kamal with another 4-3 assist there. So two down for Windsor. And Mariah DeLong up. She has walked, grounded out to third, and struck out. So officially 0 for 2. Be a big win for Mill River, getting back on track, especially against a division foe. High and outside for a ball. 3-2 ball game. It's been a good one to watch today. A lot of good action out there. That's why you got to get out and support your student athletes. As Lee will be low and go to two balls, no strikes. Yeah. Windsor. Needing the base runner here in the seventh. And that's going to be followed back out of play. That was a good level swing right there by DeLong. So again, Mill River coming off that loss to Otter Valley. Looking to rebound and get into back into the be the fourth win of the year. They started the season off three and all. And then lost to Green Mountain and Otter Valley. Oh, great pitch. Sets it up with a full count now. Three balls, two strikes, two down. Nobody on. 3-2 Mill River, top of the seventh. I'll tell you what, that just was great location on that pitch. Lee, seven strikeouts in the ball game. And that's going to be not caught, foul territory. We'll just line it up again. Same scenario, two down, 3-2 count. They retrieve that foul ball, and for Mill River, they hope they won't need it. They'd like to have it all kind of in right here. Pitch on the way, and again, tell you, with two strikes and the game on the line, this is a good at bat by DeLong. So Mariah DeLong battling away here. Lee throwing some good pitches, too. Again, Lee concentrating, looking in. 
That outside corner of the target. And another foul. I think that's the third foul ball since she's had two strikes on her. You know, and again, I urge you to get out. Like, West Rutland's a, a great place to go watch a softball game. They've got the bank, the hill right there like my River does, so you can hang out and sunshine on you, hopefully, and catch some good sports over there. Proctor's got a beautiful field. Go watch their softball or baseball team on. I hope to get over and do a Proctor girls softball game. I think they got a good little team over there. Young team. They got a very young team, but good athletes. So DeLong stepped out, composed herself, and with a 3-2 count, she kind of zoned in right now on, on Lee's pitch and release. That's going to be in play for the game. Maneri to first, and that is the ball game. It'll end on a 6-3 ground out and a strong performance by Mill River today. And they will get that 3-2 win over Windsor. And it was a delightful game to watch and call. And I'll sign off as we see the Mill River squad over there. And I'll just remind you that on May 8th at 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock at the South Station Restaurant, there's a benefit breakfast for Mike Lee. And again, all the proceeds will help him and his family with all the medical expenses and all the travel involved to go down to Western Springfield, Massachusetts, where he is. But you can call Mill River at 775-3451 to get information and get out there and support Mike Lee. I always watch Bunger Vision. Good job by Mill River.